All right, the next thing I want to talk about is linearly independent and linearly dependent. Okay, the concept is called, let's write it in red, linear dependency. Obviously, independency as well. Okay, so let's say that I'm given some functions, such as f1x, as general as it gets, f2x, and I have all the way to the fn of x, right? It's general. And let's also say that I have these uh, constants given to me all the way to the end, right? Not all zero. You'll see why I'm in a minute why all zero is no good, okay? So what will happen is if c1 plus c2 f2 fx, I sum them up all the way to cn fn of x is equal to zero. If this is satisfied, this is called linearly dependent. So if this is satisfied, linearly dependent, right? So this is also going back to the solution and existence and uniqueness. You remember that, you know, from your other courses, we are interested in independent solutions, right? We don't want to get a solution that is dependent on each other. So this is kind of important. If these are linearly dependent, then I may not have solved the whole question properly. Okay, so this is a fundamental uh, topic and I want to highlight something over here. You may not uh, seen it or maybe, maybe you do. Let's say that I have two solutions, right? C1, F1 plus C2, F2. I'm simply not writing as a function of X anymore is equal to zero. Let's say that they are linearly dependent on each other. So you can see that F1 is equal to uh, basically minus C2 by C1 times F2, right? So you can see this is a constant because there were constants before. So then the two solutions that I obtain myself will be a simply a constant multiple of the other. So that's not really valuable. If I have, if I'm interested in most of the cases linearly independent, let's say two functions, then neither is a constant multiple of the other one on the interval. That is also important. Okay. So these concepts are uh, fundamental. So I need to introduce these to you to solve. So the thing that I'm going to introduce next may seem new. Right, so depending on what you studied before, but what I'm going to introduce is called let me write, write this wrong skin, okay? And it's a Polish from Poland, a mathematician, okay? So apparently, I say this wrong. I had a Polish student in my class, he corrected me, but I still cannot say properly, I guess. Wrong skin is how am I going to say it? So let's go back f1 of x, f2 of x. So basically this uh, quantifies whether these functions are linearly dependent or independent. Okay, you'll see. It is a bit, uh, you know, dense maybe at first, but you'll see. The wrong skin, or we simply call this W, to his uh, first initial, W of F1, F2, all the way to Fn will be, I'm going to look at the determinant of this matrix, F1, F2, all the way to Fn, Fn, excuse me f1 prime, f2 prime, fn prime, right? And then I got myself all the way, all the way, all the way, f1 of n minus 1, f2 of n minus 1, and I have fn minus n minus 1. And obviously the primes, I'm using the prime notation, so those are the derivatives of that particular function that I'm giving, all right? So let's say that I'm given the solutions of a differential equation that I'm interested in, y1, y2 and all the way to yn, all right? Um, if I calculate my wrong, wrong skin with these, uh, you know, the solutions that I have, if this determinant of this matrix, wrong skin, is not equal to zero, for every x in the interval, okay? I'm gonna repeat that again. For every x in the interval that I have, then the solutions will be linearly independent. Okay. If I get my wrong skins, the determinant of the wrong skin matrix to be zero, then they are called linearly dependent. Okay. And if I establish them, them and they are linearly independent, and I will call them the fundamental set. So these solutions that I establish, remembering that these are solutions to the DE, right? And if this is satisfied, I check it, this is satisfied, 
I'll go ahead and call them the fundamental because they are linearly independent of each other. Okay, mental set of solution is what I'm going to call these as. Okay, and I will uh, now connect this fundamental set to the general solution because I use that terminology in the, when I'm solving uh, first order differential equations, as you remember. So let's write it here general solution is obtained from fundamental solution in this way. Okay. I have myself the general solution will be equal to c1 of y1 right c2 of y2 of x and I have all the way cn of yn of x okay so this is called the general solution so what I want to highlight is so far I was focusing on the homogeneous right we discussed this over here we we started this by homogeneous equation we said if this is homogeneous which means that this g of x is zero right um, and we went ahead and introduced different types of solutions now what i want to do is let's look at how am i going to solve the non-homogeneous okay and i discussed this in my uh, previous uh, uh, first order differential equation linear uh, section and I'm going to simply go ahead and repeat for that if I have a non-homogeneous equation, right? So if I have a, a, a function, let's call this yp, p stands for particular, we'll talk about it in a minute. So this a function yp that satisfies the non-homogeneous equation is called a particular solution, okay? So if I have a general solution, then it's going to be like this the general solution will be up there so this will be the solution to the homogeneous equation and I have a solution to the non-homogeneous equation I simply sum them up again I discussed this you may want to repeat you know rewatch those videos as well c1 y1 of x and I have c2 y2 of x and I add all the way to cn yn of x plus yp will be my general solution Okay, so this uh, say this is called complementary solution, while this is called particular solution. Okay, so it's um, you know it's now uh, abundantly clear that my uh, solution will be the summation of the complementary solution which I obtained by going ahead and solving the homogeneous equation which means j of x is zero or the right hand side of the differential equation is zero then I got myself a complementary uh, solution or function um, then I look at solving the non-homogeneous equation and again I'm not really discussing how I'm going to solve it I will talk about that for many many different videos right but I'm talking about let's say that I you know like magically I jump from this equation to the solution particular solution I simply sum them up I will also introduce myself another superposition I talked about superposition before let me um, repeat that so that we're on the same page so I'm talking about the homogeneous over here what happened was I have a these are the solutions of the linear ODE then this combination will also be a solution we talked about that so now I'm gonna take a little bit different approach because the right hand side was zero over there so now I'm talking about the non-homogeneous equation and actually let's go ahead and write it for a good measure a n of x dyn dxn and I'm gonna take a shortcut over here all the way to a1 of x dy dx plus a0 obviously I'm gonna get myself a g i I'll talk about what i is of x okay and I'm gonna assume this way let's say that y p1 particular one is a solution and a particular solution when I have my g1 of x right and I have the second solution y p2 will be a solution of where I have g2 of x okay and I have all the way to let's say the, uh, it goes up to it, k I have k number of solutions then g k of x okay here's what the superposition says and this is extremely handy here's what it says y is equal to y p1 plus y p2 plus all the way to the IPK, we call it up to K, will be a solution of, so I took advantage of writing on the screen, right? You, you've seen it. Where the right hand side now will be, that's why I meant by I, 
g1 of x plus g2 of x plus all the way to gk of x, okay? And I can simply write this as g sub i of x, okay? So at this point, you may be saying, okay, so this is, uh, okay, it looks good, so what, right? Let me explain, so what part? Um, or before that, let me go ahead one more time to ensure everybody got it. So I have myself a, let's say that, you know, as an example, this is g1 of x is equal to sine x. Let's say g2x, fx is equal to e to the x. And g3 of x is, let's say, ln of x, right? Just arbitrary. So I'm going ahead and saying that, hey, I solved this particular differential equation where the right-hand side is sine of x, and I got myself a particular solution. I repeat the process where it's e to the x without having sine of x, without having ln of x, just the e to the x. I solve it, I get myself yp2. Same thing, ypk, all right? So what I'm saying is, if the superposition principle works, here's the thing. The solution, the sum of them, okay, I have a solution. These solutions that I obtained over here, I will simply sum them up, and that will be solution of a case where the right hand side of this will be now, you know, sine of x plus e to the x plus ln of x. So basically, instead of going ahead and solving this complicated right hand side, it may be fairly complicated to solve this, I can simply ignore these two and solve it and get a solution. And I simply ignore these two and get a solution with just this existence, and I do the same thing for the last one, and I simply sum them up. This makes my life so much easier. You will, get, you will see that this will get in really, really handy very soon, okay? So this is the theory of linear equations. Obviously, I didn't talk at all about how to solve them at this point. Now, the next step is to approach from that angle, okay? So we, we obtain these things nice, so let's solve them. Okay, that will be exciting. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next segment. Okay, thank you.